This is part two of the basis of the psychometric chart. Again, this is going to be a multi-part video series talking about the psychometric chart, qualities of air, properties of air, and we're going to get into heating and cooling of air. Okay, psychometrics is the study of air. So before we go further, I do want to point out a couple things. Um, there's two psychometric charts you can actually download from the internet, and I want to show you how to get to those. Okay, um, if you put into Google psychometric chart PDF, okay, there's one from the engineering toolbox and there's one from Carrier. Both of those psychometric charts are pretty good and you can open them on any type of computer or many tablets using anything that opens PDF. The engineering toolbox psychometric chart is this one again it's relatively neat well put together they all look the same carrier also has one that's out that's actually decent i sort of urge you to get one of these and print it as you go through these videos so let's go back to my powerpoint here and let's talk a little bit about what the psychometric chart is okay the psychometric chart um, is a chart that combines all of the previously discussed from part one of our videos, properties of air in one place. The information on the psychometric chart assumes that we are dealing with standard air. It means sea level at barometric pressures of 29.92 inches of mercury. So again, no matter what we talk about with the psychometric chart, okay, it's sea levels. Okay, with 29.92 inches of mercury. So let's look at one of the charts again. So again, all the information is here in one place. So the specific air, wet bulb, dry bulb, relative humidity, everything else is here on one chart. Now let's look a little bit into what it covers. So we have our psychometric chart. You'll notice that there's lines and numbers all over the place. There's vertical lines, there's horizontal lines, there's scales, there's curved lines, there's lines at an angle. Every one of these lines actually means something having to do with the properties of air. So let's start with the most basic one, dry bulb temperature. It's represented by vertical lines on the chart. Moving along a vertical line does not change the dry bulb temperature. Moving to the left decreases the dry bulb temperature. Moving to the right increases the dry bulb temperature. So again, we're talking vertical lines on the psychometric chart. So if I go ahead and go to my one of my charts, and let's go ahead and go back to the engineering toolbox, since I like that one the best. And let's go into full screen mode here. Okay. Vertical lines line up and down. So across the bottom, we start off with 20, 25, 30, 35. These are dry bulb temperatures. So the lines going straight up and down are my dry bulb temperatures. Moving up or down does not change the dry bulb temperature. It allows us just to access different lines here. Moving to the right increases dry bulb temperature as we would with heating. Moving to the left decreases dry bulb temperature as we would have to do with cooling. Now, wet bulb temperatures is a little bit different. It's represented by moderately sloping lines on the chart. Moving along a constant wet bulb temperature line does not change the wet bulb temperature. So here we have our wet bulb temperature lines. Okay, you'll see that they're sloping lines, moderately sloping lines. Let me go to our site, the true example of the chart, and you'll see, you'll find the sloping lines that are coming across. Okay, the scale is over here on the curved side. So it's the sloping lines. And sometimes they label those as they come across. But like 70, 70, those are my wet bulb lines. There's no change in a wet bulb temperature if you follow the line. Only if you cross the line. 
Move up or to the right will result in an increase of wet bulb temperature. Moving down or to the left will result in a decrease of wet bulb temperature. So again, either case, these wet bulbs will increase. If you move up, you're going up in wet bulb temperature. If you move directly to the right, you're going up in wet bulb temperature. If you go to the left or down, you're decreasing the wet bulb temperature. So again, if you go right along the line, you're not changing a wet bulb temperature. But if you go in any other direction, you're changing the wet bulb temperature. Specific volume is represented by the steeply sloped downward lines on the chart. Moving along a constant specific volume line does not change the specific volume. So let's find the line. Okay, specific volume lines, this is also density, is the steeply sloping lines on the chart. So if I go over to my other psychometric chart, okay, specific volume is my steeply sloping lines. You see these black lines? And a matter of fact, it's actually this one's labeled. They're the steeply sloping lines from the left down to the bottom. That's specific volume of air. Dry air, again, we're talking about. There's no change if you just follow a line. Moving up or to the right will result in an increase in specific volume. Moving down or to the left will result in an, that should be decrease in specific volume. Okay, so movement in either of these directions will increase the specific volume. Movement in either of these directions decreases the specific volume. So the moisture content is also on the chart. It's represented by horizontal lines on the psychometric chart. Moving along a horizontal line will not change the moisture content of the air sample. So if you, again, moisture content is the horizontal lines on this chart. So let's go over to the chart and we can show it. You see these horizontal lines that go across the chart. Okay, and over here you have the moisture content. Okay, the scale. But if you go any place left to right along the line, you don't change it. If you move up or down, that's where you change your content. Moving up on the chart will increase the moisture content. Moving down on the chart will result in a decrease of moisture content. Okay, and this just shows it on the chart. Move up, you're going to increase. Move down, you're going to decrease. Move straight to the left or right, you're not going to do anything. And again, humidification, dehumidification. Dew point temperature is represented by the horizontal lines on the psychometric chart as well. Moving along a horizontal line will not change the dew point temperature of the air sample. So again, the dew point temperature almost uses the same horizontal lines as the moisture content. And if I go over here, let's go ahead and find the dew point temperature. Okay, dew point temperature again, also known as saturation temperature sometimes. Go is the horizontal lines. Moving up on the chart increases in a res increases the dew point temperature. Moving down on the chart decreases the dew point temperature. So again, up or down changes horizontally straight across left to right does not change anything. Relative humidity is represented by upward sloping curved lines. There are nine lines inside the chart. Each line represents 10% relative humidity. The bottom line of the chart represents 0% relative humidity. The top of the chart represents 100. So let's take a look at this. Again, we have our relative humidity. There's nine lines. Zero is your bottom. 10%, 20%, 30%, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 is the top of the chart. Let's look at our actual psychometric chart. Okay, so here we again can see the sloped lines. 10%, 20, 30, 40, 60, 
50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 100 is just wet. It's raining. Okay? It's, you're basically drowning in water. 0% is drier than the Sahara Desert. That's down here at the bottom. Moving up or to the left will increase relative humidity. Moving down or to the right will decrease the relative humidity. So again, increases if you move up or to the left. Decreases move down or to the right. Okay, increasing, we're humidifying. Decreasing, we're dehumidifying. So if we want to put this all together, let's use an example. We have a dry bulb temperature of 70 degrees, a wet bulb temperature of 65 degrees. First, plot the point on the chart. So we take our dry bulb temperature of 70 degrees. We have our wet bulb temperature of 60 degrees. Where the two lines cross is your point on the chart. Let me, oops. Okay, now. So, the next thing we can do is we can take a look at the enthalpy of the air. That's how many, that's the BTU per pounds of air. Okay, so we've taken our wet bulb, dry bulb, extend that wet bulb line out. We see our air has an enthalpy of 30 BTUs per pound. Now, why is that important? Well, let's get to that, but this has a lot to do with how much energy it takes to heat or cool. We can then take our horizontal line and extend it straight across through that point, and we can find our grains per moisture per pound grains of moisture per pound of dry air, which is probably right around 82, I'd say, or 84. We can also find our um, pounds of moisture per pound of dry air which is right over 0.012, okay? The scales are right there together. So as you can see, based on just having a wet bulb and dry bulb temperature, I can actually start finding all this other information about that specific air sample. I can find my dew point temperature, again, on that horizontal line, and I can find my relative humidity by finding the line, the, the sloped line that crosses that point. Okay, so we have 80% relative humidity that actually comes through that point where the dry bulb and the wet bulb meet. We can find the specific volume of the air by finding the, ver the heavily sloped line that's the closest to that point. Okay, so those are my basic lines of the psychrometric chart. Now, what do we have to do with these lines? Okay, we, you, we heat, we cool, we dehumidify, and we do other things with air. All of that takes energy, and that's why we use the psychrometric chart. So that's the end of this part of the video. So again, please view these in order. So if you haven't viewed part one, please go back and view it before you view part two. Everything builds upon itself. And we will continue in the next video.